Hi, everybody. We're live from Simon & Schuster. We're here today to talk about our favorite crime reads, just in time for the season. Um, I am Saima. I work on our corporate digital marketing team here at Simon & Schuster. Uh, just a heads up, we're going to be doing a giveaway of some of the books that we're talking about today. And the way that you can enter our giveaway is by asking a question in the comment section below. I'll be taking your questions on my phone throughout the live. So if you see me looking at my phone, it's not because I'm bored by what <laughs> my folks <laughs> are saying. It's because I'm trying to get your questions to be able to answer them live here on the screen. So you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Heather, and I work on our Get Literary blog, and we talk about all things pop culture and especially thrillers and true crime right now. So I'm really excited about this. And, and I'm Elizabeth. I work in the Simon & Schuster imprint in marketing. And I am also very excited to talk about crime and suspense thrillers because I get to work on some of them. Yeah. And these two both love to listen to true crime podcasts as well. And I get yeah. to hear about that often. So we thought, you know, why not just talk about it and share some of our favorite book recommendations that go along in that vein. Guilty. Guilty. Yeah. So. <laughs> So a lot of our uh, meeting, interdepartment meetings get derailed by us talking about what we're reading and uh, podcast recommendations. My and so. favorite murder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Serial. Serial. <laughs> Basically all of the true crime things. Um, I personally am not a big true crime person. I'm more of a thriller fan. And one of my favorite thrillers that I read last year was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. It's got like a weird thriller, but also like cultish aspect to it. Ooh. There's this fa this girl, her name's Libby, and she, I think it's Libby, I read this a while ago, let me just double check. Yeah, Libby Jones. Um, she, uh, on her like 25th birthday, she inherits, she finds out that she in inherits this home. And it's, um, she was, found in this home as a baby okay. and then was adopted by another family and so she doesn't really her, know who she, she is she doesn't really know her her like birth family oh, wow. so when she inherits the home she finds all of this news about the home and what like what happened to her birth parents and basically her parents and her family was like found mysteriously dead in the house and there's like they th there's like this other family that was living in the house. Is as there well. like haunting? Is it more like secret? She's inherited something that she doesn't want. The, it's just like all of the above. They, <laughs> they don't know how the family died. And oh, that's so, comforting. Yeah, yeah. So like there were because there were like the house wasn't like broken into or anything. And so now it's like the kind of this like cold case mystery. <laughs> but then like they find out that this other family might have been a part of a cult. Okay. And so it's it's got like all sorts of twisty vibes to it, but I like could not put it down. And yeah, speaking of cults. <laughs> You're speaking of cults. You're like speaking I have the perfect cult. book. No, but that's, that's amazing. I mean, I haven't read that yet. I really want to read that. I can't imagine how horrible that would be to find out about your that your parents were that way? like dead because of some cult. That's <laughs> wild. That's wild. But yeah, this is another. This is a true crime cult, actually about the cult Nexium, and I highly recommend this. Catherine Oxenberg, the actress from the show Dynasty. Whoa, wait, wait. So this daughter, is this is true crime. This is true crime. So. Do we need to point out when there's something that is <laughs> allegedly true? Yes. Please fact check me as <laughs> I discuss this. hypothetically <laughs> true? Absolutely. If there is anything that I'm saying that has not been legally proven yet, we're going to throw up a caution. Yeah, this is allegedly the true. happening this year, I think. So right? Keith Rainier was the person that was kind of heading up this organization called Nexium, which started as a self-help group slash leadership kind of um, like organization, right? It was really supposed to help you be the best that you could be. And then over the years, it's turned out that it was actually really a cult. And actually, so Keith Rainier, he has been prosecuted. He's been found guilty of racketeering and sex <laughs> trafficking. But this is, okay. this is really the harrowing case of a mother whose daughter got involved in this when they thought it was a self-help, mm -hmm. like leadership organization. And the crazy thing was that the mom, I think, yes. like invited the daughter to join one of the first meetings. Oh, they joined like they went together. together. Oh my gosh. And then the daughter really kind of got more involved in it. And so Catherine Oxenberg 
was working with the FBI to help bring them down. So, so that's basically, really... if you want the true crime <laughs> version, and also I on the this. cover, so they like branded yeah. the cult people, like branded people with this like Initials. weird branding. Look, just a quick tip: if someone's asking you to brand yourself. Maybe maybe take a step back and think if maybe this is a Maybe that's a giant red flag. Yeah, which is maybe, maybe it's a cult. That is, yeah, call your dad, you're in a cult. Yeah, call your dad. Because <laughs> I don't know what Stay kind of, of self-help way. book would tell you, like, let me brand you. No. Yeah. No, that's a next level, apparently. So they would yeah. get you in okay. with this idea that you're in a leadership conference. And then once you went up the ranks, you would get into the more cult-like behavior. Yeah, that creeps me out. Yeah. Well, but even thinking about the, like, that that's a true crime book, but it so- sounds like one of the really interesting parts about it is that there's this drama between the mother and daughter, and, yes. like, mm-hmm. some of these relationships are what really, like, make for a really interesting read. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one of my favorite authors here is Megan Miranda, and she's, like, queen of the twisted relationships and how that can really become toxic and how that's, like, really yeah. absorbing. Um, and so she's done, a, she's written a couple of books here, not not hypothetically or allegedly, truly, <laughs> you know, all, all real. Um, so she's written some novels. Um, uh, her first one with us was All the Missing Girls and then The Perfect Stranger. And last summer she wrote um, The Last House Guest, which is like a perfect example of twisted relationships between friends and how like sometimes your best friend could be the person that knows everything about you, but is that like a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, So lots of fascinating, um, you know, just thriller suspense vibes there. And speaking of ones with weird mother-daughter relationships. And speaking of, (laughs) um, yeah, so Megan also has a new book coming out this June. and it's called The Girl from Widow Hills, and it reminded me a little bit of what you were just talking about with Lisa Jewell's book, where it starts with a young woman who had a childhood experience that was very traumatizing, but also put her in the limelight. And because of that, she wanted to kind of get out of the media spotlight and uh, just kind of live her own life without anyone following her, figuring, like, watching her. Right. Um, so she changes her name and and um, years years go by. Um, and so when we meet her in present day, suddenly she's in the middle of another, like, uh, she's in the middle of the story again, but what the story is is that it's a murder investigation. And she is, in, she encounters a dead body and she doesn't know exactly Ooh. how everything fits together. And it's just, it's really good. And so I read this book just like a couple weeks ago, and I could not put it down. And I haven't it, read it yet, but I need that copy. But the, <laughs> so you're taking this after really. <laughs> The I real fascinating that. thing about it is that so she encounters this dead body, but she doesn't like recall what happened right before she finds the dead body. Oh. Which yeah, then just got, to clarify, she's sleepwalking and she wakes up <laughs> standing oh, over a dead body. No. Yeah. That's why she doesn't know what where happened. he came from and whether like she was involved as in someone who the dying of the body. Oh geez. I'm, you sleepwalk? <laughs> not I haven't as an adult, but as a kid, apparently, yeah, one night I think I went and got in the bathtub and my mom heard and kind of came running. So that's a nightmare. So, Actually, when I used, she was a I used kid, to sleepwalk she... too. I would like wake up in different parts of our house. Right. Am I the only one that's never been sleepwalking? Let us Maybe know in the comments below if anybody if sleepwalks ever, and yeah, have please let had us know a horrifying experience. Yeah. <laughs> we can't be the only ones that this I has mean, happened to. Yeah. No, I mean, but so the character was like had a sleepwalking incident when she was younger okay. and then didn't have any sort of instance mm-hmm. until this night when she encountered the it dead could body. Get, yeah. So then Whoa. that got me that thinking, guys, also, are you like, intrigued? <laughs> you should pre-order wait. this book. It's out in June. <laughs> and just a reminder, if you leave us a question in the comment section below, you guys can be entered to win some of the books that we're talking about here today. Including an early copy of this. We'll get another copy because Heather's taking this one. <laughs> but we'll, but you, can, you, might, you might get another copy. I might let you have Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but speaking of mother and daughter, too, I also want to call out The Winter Sister, which I will lift up here. The Winter Sister was another, this is a debut thriller that's also very much a mother-daughter story at heart. So it's about a woman named Sylvie who, when she's a teenager, her sister Persephone sneaks out one night to be with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. The boyfriend says he dropped her off home but she was missing and was found murdered. <laughs> That's true. My new you favorite don't know thing. If you can trust him. <laughs> so, but 16 years have gone by and nobody has found out what happened to her sister. Like Ooh, wow. how, you know, 
they they don't know what happened. And so Sylvie has come home to take care of uh, their sick mother. And you kind of learn more about their relationship and how complex it is, how much they kind of resent each other and have kept secrets from each other mm -hmm. and kind of the truth kind of starts to come to the surface about really ha what happened to Persephone. So I definitely recommend this as well if you really want a good twisty thriller, but that's also kind of haunting and a really beautiful, you know, kind of mother-daughter story as well. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we just got an audience question and Ooh. I'm seeing the book on our, on our list. That would be the perfect fit for this. Which so one? a question from Taylor is, are there inter any international crime reads, Nordic, Scandinavian, that you can recommend? It's funny that you should ask. <laughs> I would recommend The Tenet for sure. I am a big kind of Nordic noir fan. Yeah. So shows That's like a like, whole genre. It is a whole genre. Reading. Yeah. So if you love kind of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, if you love shows like The Killing or The Bridge, I definitely recommend this one. This one is about two detectives in Copenhagen, actually. They've actually worked together for a few years, so it's different than a lot of shows where you're seeing the first time that these partners have worked together. Mm -hmm. They've worked together for a while. They don't love each other. They work they work fine together, but they kind of annoy each other. So I love their personalities in this book, but they get called to a case where a young woman has been murdered in her first floor apartment, and it turns out her landlady lives on the third floor, I believe, and it, she's an aspiring author, and it turns out that in her manuscript she has almost kind of predicted that Ooh. this murder, and it's a really brutal, bloody murder. Oh. I believe the killer, <laughs> I, I read this several months ago, but I believe the killer kind of carves marks into the body, so it's very So kind of like like okay. the next people. More, more branding, <laughs> more like yes. unwilling brand. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. But that's it's really, bad. really good and kind of twisty turner you don't know if the landlady is involved you don't know if she is involved like how or why or what happened Was it's she a really psychic? good i can't tell you okay. i don't want to give anything <laughs> oh away but it is it is really good so i do think if you kind of like this kind of scandinavian crime stories you should definitely pick up the tenant cool wow. yeah speaking of psychics actually i just started reading this one <laughs> <laughs> it's called yeah. um oh, yeah. please see us um and this so one's out already right it just yes. came okay. out like last week yes. or the week before yeah. um so brand brand new there's actually an excerpt of it on get, get lit um if you guys want to check out the excerpt but so i just started reading it i'm not quite finished with it yet but the one of the main characters she goes by multiple names but her fake name as a psychic is clara <laughs> like clara voyant so like oh, oh yeah so i get it <laughs> So her first name is Clara. <laughs> it's like Clara. everyone's groaning. Yeah. They're like, okay, we yeah. got it. Very punny <laughs> name. But anyway, so she she does like tarot card readings, but also does like, she gets like these visions mm -hmm. about what's happening. And um, <laughs> so the book starts out, there's been two. Is she a real psychic or is this allegedly that she gets visions? So she, it seems like from the character descriptions, like her the first person descriptions from her, it seems like they're like real visions. Okay, okay. Um, and sometimes it's just like a glimpse of something and sometimes she just gets like a feeling. Got it, okay. Um, like a tingling sensation. Like there, she kept on talking about how like it felt like there was like a fly like or like an insect crawling okay. on her arm okay. kind of feeling. I know in the excerpt um, she really did, she meets the the uncle of one of the victims and gets yeah. a really bad feeling about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind Can of the how the story starts out. <laughs> so the, there's, two missing the book starts out there's two missing girls um and the uncle is the uncle of one of the missing girls and mm -hmm. he's trying to like he's put up missing person signs and a whole bunch of stuff and then on like an off chance he happens to see like the psychic shop and he's like maybe the psychic can tell me something oh my god and so the psychic had seen the signs of the missing girl posters it takes place in right. a atlantic city mm -hmm. and so like she works on a boardwalk out there like around all the casinos and everything and so there um she gets these th this um this uncle come in and she like gets a sensation about like a weird tingly feeling about the missing person. Right. And then as the story goes on, she happens to run into other people who have mm -hmm. some sort of connection oh. to the existing missing people. Okay. And then the other people that come in this start going like missing as well. like a dangerous town to live in if everyone is connected to the Well, I mean, it's a Burnick City, so I guess it's kind of small <laughs> kind for of like a, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, but like, 
it's kind of creeping me out because it seems like everybody who's going to see this psychic is now like in the danger zone. In the danger zone, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's a really great read though, and I'm really enjoying it. And apparently we have another audience question. So let me check my phone. Um, Debbie asks, which of these thrillers would you say was the scariest? The scariest. Okay. Ooh. I have to say when I was reading um, Girl from Widow Hills, there are a lot of scenes where oh someone with the main character is alone in a house far away from everyone else. And it made me so happy to live in an apartment surrounded by other apartments and like people yelling on yeah. the street outside and sirens and like just loud city noises that normally I don't appreciate. Right. Because I did not want to be reading this alone in a room right. or alone in a house. That was like in the middle of nowhere. It was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that I was like any any like small noise that I could hear I can attribute to like Someone Sitting in my noise. building right. and not like someone knocking on my door right. trying to come kill me. No, that's I terrifying. Agree. So I that was very scary for me, but also helped like made me appreciate the city life, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that makes sense. I would say actually her deadly secrets, which I finished very recently, is maybe the scariest to me, and I'll tell you why. Um, because it's about this private investigator named Kira. So as part of her job, she's turning in a report to her boss. And this one's fiction, right? This one's fiction. This one is a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to mix true crime and thrillers a lot, but no, this is a thriller. And so Kira is going to her boss's house. Uh, sorry, to to deliver a report to her boss, who is at his client's house. The client Ryan is a defense attorney who is about to defend a doctor who's been accused of killing his wife. So it's a big, like, splashy murder mm. trial. And Kira goes to deliver this report. And then that night, her boss at the house, he opens the door thinking there's going to be food delivery and he gets shot. <gasps> and so all of a sudden, Kira has to take over the investigation and figure out, you know, what information in this trial was worth being, you know, do you, think he, for? do you think he looked through the peephole? Because he, you I mean, have to look through your peephole before opening opening the door. I, I'm trying I to remember. Never do do you? Of course. <laughs> See, this is what happens when we we were talking about this, this before. Is York, right? Right? This is set in Austin, which I just want to say as People well. People are probably in Austin. There are fewer murders. <laughs> maybe, but maybe in New York we're so used to. I was thinking, triple locking our doors and checking. But, I was thinking more uh, that I like, like I read so much true crime and like true. listen to true crime that I'm constantly thinking of the worst possible scenario. That is true as well. So I was like, oh, someone is following me down the street. It's not because they live on my street. It's because they're trying right. to follow me home. Uh, right. And I'm gonna go into this bodega for a right. while. Right. <laughs> on the well, other I guess side, I should be more cautious. I feel like I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm also paranoid but, and no one should live this way. No, you're right. But I feel like whenever right. I'm ordering. Like delivery, like I I usually do it on one of the apps, so like I know that like the, oh it's arriving he's, between he's this you know five to ten minute time frame. So then when I hear the door buzz, I'm just like oh yeah that's my food coming up the elevator. Like, I was just going to say I did it. I'm guilty of that fine. last night. I just buzzed in someone knowing it was probably my food, and then I opened the door without checking. Yeah. Won't do that now. Won't do that again, <laughs> especially after finishing this book. It, you know, I mean, it really takes you through a lot of twists and turns about, you know, who would have done this and why. So mm. it was really, it was a juicy read. I have to say, though, I don't, when I lived at home at my parents' house, I grew up in Ohio, and there I never would open the door without, like, checking through the window to see who it yeah. was first. Right. Um, we have another audience question. Diane okay. asks, are you able to read thrillers back to back, or do you need mm. to switch it up in between? Personally, I always switch it up because I treat reading like like eating different kinds of food. Like yeah. sometimes you don't, you can't have like cake at every meal or you can't have a salad can't at every you? meal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, so, so sometimes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hypothetically, you could, I guess. Um, but what you do want is like just to experience different things right. with what you're reading. And so I tend to read a lot of different kinds of things, but a lot of the books that we've been talking about, even if they have similar like pacing or, you know, they're all page turners, there are different um, qualities in all of them. So I think it would all make for very different reading anyways. Like you said, sometimes there's, you know, this there's like a work relationship that drives the search for yes. truth. Sometimes there's like the mother daughter thing. Sometimes it's the secrets from someone's family or like right. they're trying to figure out something from their past. Right. So there's always something different that will provide like insights, you know? 
And I will say too that I am also a romance reader, so I do tend to go between uh, true crime, thrillers, and romance. And actually, this, in addition to being a thriller, also does have a romance plotline. It's a, it's. I would argue it's also kind of romantic suspense. So if you mm. like romance, there's a touch of that as well. And that to me is kind of a palate cleanser of going between the genres like that. I really yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I alternate between like a dark and twisty mystery. And then, like, I'm like, total opposite. Now let me read the romantic comedy. Reading, for me, sometimes when I'm reading, like, true crime especially, I want to read something that I'm yes. like, I know this was imagined. I know it didn't happen. Give me right. some faith in the world yeah. again. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Although, so, what did make to... me feel good about the world was one of these, one of our true crime books that we were talking about. Really? Um, I know. Bear with me. Okay. I'm going to go Mind with Hunter about Ooh. some of the worst serial killers in America. And the reason this made me feel better about yes, the world please tell us. is because it's about the rise, um, the development of the behavioral analysis mm. unit in mm. the FBI. So right. this is what the Netflix series Mindhunter is based off of. But it's about the FBI agents who basically started to um, create uh, profiles for serial killers and right. for people who um, do repeat crimes so that then they could either like find them faster hunt them down um, figure out how to try to catch people before they you know commit more crimes and so the fact that I read this and I just remember finishing it thinking wow there's someone else out there who's like doing the hard work yeah. <laughs> and doing doing the doing the job of like trying to like catch all these violent people and stop allegedly these allegedly violent <laughs> allegedly violent people um, and so it just made me feel better to know that like that people are out there doing this. No, that's a great so, point. And I mean, DNA just recently caught the Golden State Killer. Yeah. So, you know, that's But this that's is also fascinating point. if you just like like social sciences right. and narrative nonfiction. It's like they're they're so smart. So two quick things. We have a just want to remind everybody that if you ask us a question in the comment section below, that you'll be entered to win a few of the books that we're talking about today. And who doesn't love winning some books? So um, we also have an audience question from Angie, who asks, which book got you hooked from page one and not wanting to put it down until it was over? And this, I have the perfect answer for this. So <laughs> I am not a big true crime person, but my friend Anna came out last summer I got an early copy of it and I literally could not put it down. I missed my subway stop multiple times <laughs> because I was reading this book. I like canceled plans with my I friends feel like that that's night. A thing I in publishing not. houses when it's when people say that they missed their subway stop, they're like, oh, okay, I understand what you mean. Yeah. If you're in New York, that's the highest compliment. <laughs> Absolutely. No you question. stop paying attention to the subway? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I li I literally had drinks plans with my friend that <laughs> night too, and I was like, sorry, I can't make it. <laughs> not feeling well. I was and like, this is I just based had on to keep the reading. article, right? Yeah. So this is written by Rachel Deloche Williams, who wrote a uh, I think it was a Vanity Fair, Vanity Fair article about how she basically got conned by who she thought this woman who she thought was her best friend. Right. So then it was um, Anna Delvey who like claimed to be this heiress from Germany had like been living in the hotel was, oh wait no oh, she yeah. definitely was claiming that wasn't even <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a legend that, yeah that was that was definitely a real thing um she was living in a hotel in the city and was like living like the new york high life like rubbing like elbows all with society uh, yeah it like girls. yeah she was like the society it girl mm -hmm. kind of um like leading the charge and so Rachel was working as like a photo editor at Vanity Fair at the time and she happened to meet Anna through a friend of a friend and they over time slowly became good friends and about a year and a half into their friendship Anna invited Rachel on an all expenses paid trip to Morocco so she was like I would like, love that yeah, yeah like who would want an all expenses paid trip to like a luxury vacation sounds great so Rachel's like, okay, yeah. that sounds great. <laughs> so Rachel goes along with Anna to this trip. They, the day or right before they were about to book the flight, Anna said she was having some issue with her credit card. So Rachel bought the flights. Then they get to Morocco and um, Anna's credit card again mysteriously stops working and they're staying in this so hotel that costs $60,000. <laughs> so Rachel ends up putting her credit no. card down. No. But her personal credit card she didn't have 
um, enough of a credit limit for it, so she put down her company corporate credit card. Oh, no. Um, and then she just thought she Anna just... would pay her back and because they were, like, best friends at that point. And then Anna never paid her back. What I'm learning is don't trust your friends. Don't trust your friends. <laughs> just be very cautious. Trust but verify. <laughs> trust but verify. Don't trust yeah. someone that's going to brand you. Don't trust someone that asks to use your credit card for $60,000. <laughs> It's a lot of good life lessons here. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you but, go. Like, as I was reading this, I was just like horrified by like what happened to Rachel. And I could not put this book down. Oh it was gosh. incredible. Everybody needs to read it because it's just so juicy. And it's mm -hmm. it's a true crime story without having a murder mystery involved. Okay. Oh, okay. So I also I did bring some some books that were like crime but not um but not murder crime. Oh, okay. um, for some people, you know, maybe you are interested in crime or like financial crime or, you know, things that where people, people are not behaving well, but you don't want to read about right. dead bodies. Um, <laughs> so one of these is The Falcon Thief. Um, and Joshua Hammer is a, um, he's a journalist and he's written, his other book was, um, the Badass Librarians of Timbuktu about oh. uh, saving manuscripts um, and, you know, like old records from the libraries of Alexandria. So Which, as book lovers, clearly appeals to us. Right. <laughs> um, and so this is, uh, this is a true story and he goes into the world of exotic animal smuggling. Um, and so this was basically like, um, yeah, it's an adventure story, but um, it's all about ex exotic birds and how they get, you know, sent around the world. How people who are animal lovers or animal traffickers um, are, you know, making a business out of this. Right. And it's just like, you know, sometimes when you go down a Wikipedia wormhole and you're like, I had no idea this even existed. <laughs> yes. That's what it's like reading yes. this book where you're wow. just like, I didn't even know this corner of the universe was here. And there are all yeah, these people know. like... Bird like are in it. like a thing. Yeah, so if you're interested in exotic <laughs> animal crimes, <laughs> check it out. Well, it's fascinating because I grew up in Florida and there have been a lot of animals kind of smuggled into Florida and then they actually it's a problem because they then kind of overtake the animals or the reptiles or what have you that are natively there as well, so it mm -hmm. causes all sorts of chaos and you would be surprised. Yeah. But yeah. it's real. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got two more audience questions. One, um, questions. I'm sorry if I butcher this. Um, Sid, I think it's Cindy, but um, anyways, I need a thriller with a romance in it. What do you recommend? So the the one that I just recommended, Laura Griffin, her Deadly Secrets, that has a romance in it. It ends happily. Uh, I think you'll be very happy with that one. Yes, her Deadly Secrets. And that's the only romantic suspense that I brought with me this time. But Do you have any other recommendations, though? You know, I do, but I'm blanking on them right now. I will leave a comment in the thread, though, um, and I will give you a lot more recommendations there because I'm a big romance reader, and I love romantic suspense as well. Mm. And then the other question we got was from Emily, and she said, what book would you love to see as a TV show or a movie? I want to see all of Megan yeah. Miranda's um, books as TV shows and movies. Um, I would also love to see, I brought Jessica Knowles' book, Luckiest Girl Alive. Uh, this came out a couple of years ago, and this would also be one that I would say I probably read like cover to cover in one, one or two sittings. Like You don't want to put it down. Uh, really suspenseful. Um, it's about... Um, it, similar to the um, girl from Widow Hills where you kind of go back and forth in time where you see a young woman as a teenager in high school and she experiences something that's like really traumatic in high school um, and then you see her in the future in, like living this really glamorous life in New York City everything looks perfect like she's the like luckiest girl alive and you start realizing that this thing from the past has really like sunk its teeth into her and changed who she is and you kind of keep getting like the layers and layers and layers peeled back. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what was the first part of the question that I started talking about? <laughs> Books to see as a oh, TV yeah, show Oh yeah, so I really want to see this as, a, as like a TV show or movie because it would be like, 
yeah, it would be like crime meets Gossip Girl right. meets like, you know, like that kind of beautiful, like beautiful people doing bad things. But also Delicious. the, Delicious. Uh, yeah, also just like teenagers. <laughs> right. I don't, I'm just rambling at this point. It's a really good book. You should read it. <laughs> so, and one that is actually already a TV show is Dirty John. Yeah. It's a show on, I think, Bravo. So I haven't actually read this book, but I know you have. Yes, but it's very good. It's also um, so it's got other true crime. Yeah, stories Chris, in it as Chris well. Gofford is um, he's a crime journalist. I think for the LA Times, right? Yeah, yeah. For the LA Times, and so <laughs> this is a collection of some of his reporting on crimes in LA. So he's just like an incredible reporter. So if you like just like if you like reading crime stories online or anything like that, um, this is a great collection because it's also something that you can pick up and put down. Uh, and just read if you only have a short amount of time. Like if you're if you're reading on the subway and you can only read like you know ten pages or something, it's perfect for that. Yeah. And I would recommend. I'm going to come at this from a different way, which is that the reason that I was really interested in reading this book is because of the movie Wind River. So it's a movie that I, I had already seen, and it really kind of tackled the fact that indigenous women and girls are much more likely to be um, kidnapped and raped and murdered. Um, and it's a really actually huge problem in North America in general. So Highway of Tears is actually, it's um, this is true crime and it is about real women who uh, in Northern British Columbia have been disappearing along this highway. Oh wait, that's not I mean, no, this is, they definitely they, they have definitely been, been, they've been, been definitely disappearing. Been disappearing. <laughs> this is real. And they've been disappearing along this highway, uh, I believe it's Highway 16 in uh, Northwest uh, British Columbia since, you know, for years and years and years. And this book kind of picks up in the 80s with missing girls and about how the police were, you know, honestly not that interested in helping. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a huge problem that Canada has started to face in the last few years. So they've had kind of nationwide inquiries. But this is a really important book. um, And I've been learning a lot and it's really opened my eyes about you know, kind of the way that we haven't been treating our indigenous, you know, women yeah. and, and girls. I well. really want to read that. It's, it's really, so really important. It's such an important topic. And yeah. That's, yeah, you're right. That's another way to come at where, you know, sometimes we talk about like crime or reading like thrillers and stuff as like really escapist, but it's right. also mm-hmm. good to treat it like as something educational. Yeah. yeah. And that you can like really learn more about the world and like what you can be doing to educate yourself and others. Absolutely. It, it made me so much more aware of everything. Mm-hmm. So. So that's all the time we have today, unfortunately. But just a reminder, we are giving away a bunch of these titles. So make sure you leave a question in the comment section below. We'll be answering those questions later on in the thread. Um, And make sure to follow GetLiterary.com for more true crime and thriller recommendations. And also, Elizabeth's written some posts for (laughs) OffTheShelf.com as well. Um, Those are two two of our blogs where we tend to talk a lot about true crime and thriller books and give a lot of great recommendations. recommendations. Oh, you can also follow Simon Books, and we will be giving lots of uh, our titles away (laughs) in the coming months. We're just plugging everything (laughs) here, guys. But we love to talk about books, and we hope you guys come back for more Facebook Lives in the future. So make sure to leave a question below, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.